Hello everybody and welcome to another amazing video of DIY investing. Bitcoin and altcoins have been breaking out like we haven't seen since all the way back in 2021. With the new bull market starting, this is leading so many different people to start looking into long-term holds, structuring and planning for the best way to make the most profit over this cycle. And for today's video, I figured today would be a great opportunity by talking about this market cycle itself, analyzing the sentiment that we're seeing currently, and I'm going to be mapping out a chart that perfectly explains the direction that Bitcoin's price is about to be headed. And in my opinion, there's no other sentiment cycle that stacks up quite like this one does. So make sure you stay all the way to the end so you don't miss out on any of this information I'm going to share with you. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And with that being said, let's jump right into this amazing video today. Alrighty guys, so here we are to start off today's video and we are going to be going over a sentiment cycle that in my opinion is far more correlated to what we're seeing inside of Bitcoin than anything else that I've seen up to this point. Now we have the four year cycles, we have different things like that that we obviously stick to in our long term thesis. But when it comes to analyzing different sort of things inside of the early part of the cycle, this is something that I find very interesting because I haven't really seen a sentiment cycle that is stacked up quite like what we're seeing right now inside of Bitcoin. And this is you know, pretty much the same correlation. So I figured today we'd go through this. We're also going to be talking a little bit about the total market cap, getting into the breakout that we just saw. We're going to be looking at the total altcoin market cap as well. And then we're also going to be talking a little bit about the DXY and getting into some of these little things. So we're going to be going through the sentiment cycle and we're going to be analyzing how similar it actually is to what we're seeing inside of Bitcoin. Now this part up here at the top looks very much the same as what we actually experience in our cycle top over here. We went through, you know, kind of this same sort of consolidation that led to our inevitable cycle top where we have this trend and then we would also have this trend right here. And then we have the return to confidence, which would be up here. We would have returning confidence. And then after that, we'd have this sell off back to this trend, which is the buy the dip. And then after that, we get the run up to our cycle top, which is actually enthusiasm. And now when we actually started our bear market, this is where things get really interesting because we kind of went through that exact same consolidation that we ended up going through up in this period over here, where once we start to sell off from enthusiasm, we come down. And then we actually, you know, we're kind of retesting the support down in here, but this is really where we're setting up before our big drop that takes us near to capitulation. And this is kind of disbelief. And then through this consolidation, this is really where we start breaking down. And this is where we see the subtle warning one. This would have been our consolidation that we were at right at the beginning sell off where we came all the way back down and retested near that 30 K support. And then we were kind of coiling right in here came back down to retest that trend line. And then that would have been the subtle warning one. Now overt warning was when we actually broke below that. And that was kind of indicated by this move right here, consolidating break below that support. And then you're coming back down into contact with this beginning trend line right here. It's the same one that we were on right here. It was the one where we got the bottom for the buy the dip. And then that was really where we sold all the way back down in here. And that really would have been your overt warning was when we started to break down in this way. Now, what I find interesting is in the same sort of way that we followed this kind of in our cycle top, we ended up following it all the way back down in here towards our cycle bottom as well. Maybe even better. We get panic once we've actually broken down from both these trends. And then we go for our massive capitulation. This would have been when, you know, Luna collapsed, when everything was collapsing in the summertime. And then that's actually where we bounce back up. And this is where we start our first horizontal resistance line. We're going to draw this over and then we come down to our cycle low, which is discouragement. Now, what I find so interesting here is the fact that we've continued to follow this all the way through throughout this entire period. Now, during this period, we go through this consolidation as we run all the way back up to the resistance and the top of panic. And then this is called the wall of worry. This consolidation that we went through over in this area, right? Same exact sort of consolidation. We'll put the wall of worry down in here. And then at the top of that, we saw anxiety. So up to this point, we have pretty much followed this nearly identically. After we run up to our first resistance being the top of panic, we sell back down. That's what's known as aversion. That would have been this sell off right down in here. We pretty much retested the midway point of this range. Exact same thing happened. And then we run back up to our resistance. This is the top of panic from right here. 
top of anxiety all the way over. And inside of this, even though we're on a bigger time frame, this wick, we actually went through the same sort of consolidation where we consolidated right here at this resistance before this most recent breakout that we just saw. And so far, we have continued to see this play out. In fact, we've already broken outside of this resistance. Now, what I find so interesting is that these two are so similar to each other. And the reason why they actually are has everything to do with emotions. Inside of market cycles, inside of asset classes, inside of whatever it is, technologies, no matter what it is, if we have a price and a market that we can actually trade it and humans are investing, it's the emotions of the humans investing that are actually what dictate the way that these cycles are created, right? And so today we have algorithms, we have different sort of bots and different things like that. But for the majority of the money inside of the market, it's going to be moving through emotion. And so that's why we see these sort of patterns play out. It's why I can share with you guys the Wall Street cheat sheet. We can look at an entire market cycle and we can actually see a lot of different altcoins or Bitcoin itself that has created these same sort of market cycles as well. And so the reason why we see these same sort of similarities play out, the same cycles continue to repeat, has everything to do with the fact it's the same humans that keep investing into these markets. So nothing really changes as far as that goes, whether the technology is different, whether the asset class is completely different, no matter what it is the humans investing into these are always gonna make the same patterns. And that's what we've seen up to this point. So now that we've broken out of this denial phase, as you guys can see, we get to the returning to confidence phase. And this is interesting because the return to confidence phase, I'm gonna make this a little smaller up here. The return to confidence phase takes us all the way back up to basically these trend lines, which more or less is gonna be at the top of this resistance here. You guys can see we come all the way back up to basically the return to confidence. And while I don't believe that we're gonna be running all the way up to the range highs at the cycle uh, top around 65K, I do think that we're gonna be hitting upwards of about 48K. And then this will be setting us in for that next run up in price. So this is kind of what I would thought was interesting to talk about for today's video. Give you guys something to look at based off of the way that this cycle has played out and you know how other cycles have actually played out as well. And if this is going to continue to play out, we would actually expect to move upwards of about $48,500. Now guys, what we talked about earlier was how the altcoin total market cap actually broke out and Bitcoin and the crypto total market cap broke out as well. This is the crypto total market cap. This one broke out of the range highs that we saw from August. And now we have broken out, but we are seeing a pullback. Um, and so, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we ended up coming back down to reconsolidate on top of this level of support. Um, because this is kind of a nasty looking rejection candle, we could end up making some type of longer type. Of, we could end up making a longer consolidation off of this level before we get any continuation. But I think regardless, guys, we have broken from this. So even if we are going to see this pullback, we come back down on this level. I don't think that you should be worried about that considering we did just clear, you know, a 300 day range approximately. The total market cap, I believe, was 300 days. Yeah, just almost exactly 300 days that it took before we broke out. So this is a long term range. Now that we're outside of it, even if we retest that level, I'm still expecting that we're going to get continuation and I'm going to expect that we're going to go to at least you know, one and a half trillion dollars. And this is the total market cap, keep in mind. But the total market cap of crypto, if Bitcoin runs up to 48 and a half thousand, like I've been talking about, then the total market cap of crypto, I'm not necessarily anticipating it going all the way up that high because altcoins lag. So we have to remember that. If altcoins end up lagging a little bit behind Bitcoin, then most likely it'll top somewhere over here or over in this range, it'll just be a little bit more lagging. And that has to do with the fact that the total market cap lags Bitcoin in the early part of the cycle at least. And so far with the altcoins, we haven't quite broken out of the August highs yet, but we did clear the mid range point. And this is most, you know, probably the most important level inside of our chart for the altcoins. Uh, because it's the biggest resistance that we've had and we did break out of that. So up to this point, everything we've needed to see for a bullish market for continuation to see altcoins pump has happened. They've broken out and we are seeing this sell off today. But in my opinion, it's not really anything that I should or that you guys should hold any weight to. I'm not personally holding much weight to it because I do believe that we're going to get continuation. So what I think is going to play out is most likely we're going to be running upwards of this resistance up here. A range highs at the total market cap, that's like $1.32 uh, trillion. For Bitcoin, that would be like 32.5K approximately, or 32K just to give it an even number. Even if Bitcoin ends up kind of pulling back here, you know, that can happen. But I think that regardless, most likely that's the next area of demand that we're going to be seeing. And I did talk to you guys about this potential where we end up doing some type of consolidation 
that is a little bit more along the lines of this. And I still think that this is very much something that we need to pay attention for because, you know, nothing has really changed from when I originally talked to you guys about this different trading plan. But if we end up coming all the way back up to these range highs like I just drew, I wouldn't be surprised if we come back down to actually sell and retest those because this is lining up perfectly with this $30,000 level, right? This $30,000 level in $29,000 depending on where you draw it. But this entire level is a major support level and resistance level that takes place all the way back into our bull market. This was the level we consolidated on throughout you know, our cycle top, even into the bear market. And so I wouldn't be surprised that if we get a breakout from this level like we're seeing already, that we come back down and flip it and truly cement that the support is in. And then that will set us in for that next leg up that will be taking us upwards of our range highs, right? And so when we're looking at the total market cap, the total market cap's already cleared the range highs. So most likely this is just going to follow along with the price of Bitcoin really closely. If altcoins lag like they have up to this point, then it will slightly lag Bitcoin. But I mean, regardless... This is looking good, broken from a 300-day range. Altcoins, in my opinion, are going to be making their range high move next. They're going to be running up here to about $703 billion in total market cap. And then from there, I probably would expect at least some slight pullback. But I don't think it really matters, guys. If we're looking at these things based off our Elliott Wave count, every single one of these have only ever finished a one-wave one impulse, right? Three waves up, ABC back down, and now we're starting the next impulse back up. This is a wave one of three based off of my Elliott wave count. This is a wave one of three. Wave three of three could even get us above these range highs. We could run all the way up to 760 billion. Maybe that is the move where we end up flipping these range highs inside of a four wave sell off. And then from there, we'd get even more continuation upwards of, I would say about 860 billion. Because if Bitcoin and the, alt, or the total market cap is coming upwards of these higher resistance levels, I'm not expecting altcoins to do that. I'm expecting them to lag slightly. And so I do think that there will be periods where they outperform. But regardless, we make this leg up to three, come back down, retest this from wave four, and then we come back up for one more final wave five here. And then at that point, you know, we could be looking at a lengthier type of consolidation, whether it's on the top of these August highs or whether we even come all the way back down to retest roughly the level we just broke from. Um, that's kind of what I'm going to be watching for big term. Um, in the short term with the DXY, this is a very important chart that we talk about considering this is basically the antichrist of crypto. If the dollar is going up, then crypto is obviously going down. Generally, it doesn't always 100% work like that, but it, uh, up to this point, it's been very much correlated that way. Now, with the dollar, we are retesting the support and we have bounce from support. So we weren't able to actually break down. That's kind of the thing that I was watching for. And now the question is, is this a double bottom? Are we going to get a strong buyback? If we were able to get a strong enough buyback, maybe upwards of about 102.8 to 103, and then we we're able to actually reclaim this prior support level right here, if we were able to reclaim this as support, in my opinion, that could easily set this in for being a double bottom. And then we could be looking at a much bigger move up, probably upwards of about 108. And that's kind of what I would be watching for. Big picture, what that would look like. Because remember, guys, I still think that this is a bearish uh, structure. So that would just be a bigger picture, A, B, C correction. And in my opinion, that well, if I think that'd probably be up to the 618 too. Yeah, so 0 0.5 to the 618, the 618 would be 109 and a half. The 0 0.5 would be 108. So that's kind of what I would be watching for if in fact the dollar is able to reclaim this. And if the dollar reclaims this, that's bad news for um, the crypto markets. Most likely the run up would not be nearly as large. Uh, we would probably go through a much lengthier period of consolidation before we were able to break out. But I'm not anticipating the dollar to run all the way back up to this resistance. In my opinion, it would have happened in here. But, you know, if the market starts stitching in a strong bottom down here, then we have to just be aware of that. We have to play the bearish alternative because we don't want to lose all the profit that we've made up to this point. Big picture, I don't think it matters. Markets are breaking out, clearing resistance levels, altcoins have broken out. Even though we're seeing a little bit of a pullback today in the short term, I don't really think that we should focus too much attention on that. 
you know, even if we come back down and retest the range lows. Overall, to me, this looks like the type of sell-off that you see whenever there's a lot of lake long, whenever there's a lot of late longs. A lot of people that were longing in here, feeling like they were getting left behind, FOMO buying at the top. These sort of sell-offs oftentimes will happen just to kind of liquidate all of those late longs. All the people that are over leveraged in the short term capture some more liquidity on support before going up for more continuation. The big thing here is even though Bitcoin's selling off and it does look like on the daily time frame we could be looking at a pretty big rejection at resistance, altcoins are retesting their prior resistance levels as support. So altcoins actually look pretty good right now. So that's kind of what's telling me that most likely we'll probably see a little bit more continuation from here. But if Bitcoin keeps dropping and it rejects even more, then altcoins are going to ruin their setups and they're going to go down with Bitcoin. So I'll keep you guys updated. This is my video I had for you. If you guys found value in this, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these updates. If you guys want to join the Discord server, you guys want to see all the trades that I'm taking, how I'm investing my money over the cycle. We've been investing into so many different altcoins, really doing a lot of research into which ones are going to potentially play out in a big way, which narratives are going to be really hyped. You guys know a little bit about what I've talked about on this YouTube channel. So if you guys ever want to see the exact details of how I'm positioning myself, what we're talking about in the market, there's a private chat as well. So if you guys want to be able to talk to other members or you could also DM me, ask me specific questions, whether it's questions you have in trading, talking about charts, whatever it is, you can feel free to DM me if you guys have access. Once again, you can join by signing up on my website. Links are in the description. Thank you all so much for the support, and I can't wait for this cycle to play out. Thus far, it's been amazing. I'm so grateful to have this opportunity to be able to do what I do, be able to share with you guys these charts. Now that we're finally breaking out, and it really is looking like the next move coming is going to be pretty decently sized, all the way up potentially to 50K. You know, I'm really excited to be able to see what you guys are able to make of this because we've got another bull run ahead of us. Now is the greatest opportunity and time to position ourselves. So with that being said, I'll do my best to help you guys along the way. Thank you all so much for the support. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. As always, peace out.